The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 300 Getting Directions And that's what we're looking for, Starlight finished, standing carefully at attention. Can you help us? A company stallion with a brushy mustache stared back, pretending not to watch as Valet and Jam Jars created uneasy and predatory glances behind her. Um, um, well, it possibly might be possible. What do you say I get you some papers to run this request up to the fighting department upstairs? They should be able to get you sorted and on your way to the right warehouse, hmm? He raised an eyebrow, hopefully. We were just there, Stolly said coolly. Twice, and they told us you could do that. If a company is bad enough at management that they can lose track of a family of twelve, just say so and save us the trouble of walking back and forth. The stallion's face drooped in sympathy. Well, that can't be quite right. If only I had the proper documents, I'd help you in a jiffy. But seeing as this isn't my department... What's that? Well, he chirped, ducking beneath the stallion's desk and coming up with a crate settled heavily on her back. You don't have the right documents? Oh, that's a shame. She glanced at her swiped cargo. On the side, in bright red letters, was painted, Evacuation Pony Location Registration. The stallion blinked at it. They're not in here. Billy shrugged, grinning beneath the crate's weight. Ah, that's too bad. It really looks like they should be. I'll just dump this out a window van so it doesn't go confusing anyone. Besides, a little mischief might be just what your paper pushers need to stay on your... Mm, here it goes. Grunting, she lifted it to a window, the stallion rushing to save it. No, wait, those are important. Fud. The crate hit the hallway floor and Valet lounged against it. Cool, then stop being lazy and tell us where to go. The stallion grumbled and began to rifle through the box, muttering about thousands of pages and pushy customers and the unfairness of life. Valet offered a hoof bump, but Starlight didn't take it, and Jam Jars just looked at her weird. Okay, fine, whatever. Leaning back, Valet rolled her eyes. These bureaucrats are pretty dumpy. Back at the defense force, everyone had to be good because they had me to keep them in shape. Slackers. Jam Jars grinned. Speaking of staying in shape... Valet raised a dangerous eyebrow. I have no idea what your problem is, but can and will give you one if you keep asking that nicely. Please don't, Starlight sighed, aware that Hestia was still giving them a wide berth. She was tempted to find the teleporting unicorn and simply request for jam jars to be sent back to the ship, then incapacitated with Gerardo's sword, but that could lead to trouble later on. I know, I know, Valet rolled her eyes. The moment I try to pound her, she can scream bloody murder and get us all kicked out of this place in a snap. Jam jars smirked. Oh, I've already gotten kicked out twice. They're just bad at stopping me from getting back in. Knock it off, Starlight groaned, feeling her nerves shrink fervor. A faint, pink, magical presence at the back of her mind whispered peace and calmness, but however much stability she had recovered by getting her sight back and reuniting with Maple was quickly unraveling with stress. She didn't want to think about how much she had hurt herself over exerting her magic, about how helpless she had been while blind, about how Herman had pinned her to a wall with an axe handle at her throat, while Valet was fighting for her life when they could have just ran. She didn't want to think about how Granada had died. Others had died too, but Granada's only fault had been placing too much trust in the spirit, and from the several times Starlight had met her, she seemed nice. But the moment she started thinking about that, Starlight knew she wouldn't be able to stop. There was something she needed to save until it was safe, quiet, and dark, surrounded by ponies she trusted completely. She just had to hold herself together a little longer to see Maple's wish through and help White Chocolate, since Maple was unable to do it herself. Ouch! Jam Jars' a shriek pierced the air, making Starlight jump. The yellow filly was clutching her side with a hoof and glaring sourly at Valet. You cut me! Meh, it's just a paper cut. Was Valet examined the edge of her wing, the thin, spindly bones holding it together just sharp enough to be used as an annoyance. Maybe you've never been beaten up before, but injuries hurt. Seriously, stop trying to annoy me. All my usual ways of making someone feel awkward back aren't appropriate for kids. 
Jim Jars pursed her lips, the paper-digging stallion thoroughly ignoring her. Oh, yeah? Like what? Valet waggled a hoof. Nope. Flirting and rude jokes and stuff. Maybe I'll tell you when you're older. Stop, Starlight growled, tension building in her throat. Or I'm going to start yelling louder than both of you put together, and then we'll just leave and you can explain to Maple why we weren't able to help her friend. The company stallion was now positively sweating, knowing exactly who Valet was and clearly fearing a scene. Jam Jars looked like she was feeding off his discomfort, and Valet shot Starlight an apologetic glance. Yeah, you know what? Sorry. We'll just go somewhere else. She matched Jam Jars' grin for half a second, and that was all the warning the filly had before Valet tackled her, pulling them both into shadow. Starlet grimaced. She remembered what had happened the last time Valet had used her shadow sneaking on an unsuspecting foal. But really, Jam Jars had it more than coming. She stood, ears twitching, keeping the stallion in the corner of her eye, and eventually was rewarded with a distant ah! from a supply closet at the far end of the hall. Got it! Found it! Found it! So nervous, the stack of papers nearly slipped from his mouth, the stallion straightened up. He scratched away at another paper for three seconds before shoving it in Starlight's face. There's a map! No numbers! Even a bothersome and filly like you can understand it! Happy? Starlight took it and eyed it over. Rudimentary and not artistically inclined, but it left little doubt of where the roads were, or used to be before the flood turned them into mud canals or else put them entirely underwater. Hestia could certainly use it for teleport, and once they got to the right place, hopefully someone on duty would actually remember a family as big as white chocolates. <sighs> Starlet exhaled, nostrils flaring, trying to compose herself as the stallion raced away, muttering about incident reports. I can do this, Maple, she whispered to herself. I hope white chocolate will be as glad to see me as she would be for you. End of chapter 300